Hello again. We have another challenge against Mr. Well, I'm not sure how to pronounce that. I guess it's Veli Hiliyanen. That's definitely. I'm sure that was not the way to pronounce it, but I apologize in advance. So we have the London system here with this tricky move knight c3. I say tricky because usually the knight is not developed to c3 but rather on d2 and so on. But here right has a very aggressive intentions of going queen d2 and long castles in his next moves. So if I just play my regular bishop g7 move I would be forced into a some kind of a perk defense so I, I guess I have to play d5 anyways e3 I guess his next move is going to be something like h4 that's what these people like to do now I personally really don't believe in this kind of systems for white but I'm not for one second suggesting that they are any bad or uh, unplayable I also know personally some very strong players which like to play this kind of system I'm just suggesting that um, uh, if black knows what he is doing he should be in a very good position yes yeah, so h4 was played now the first thing which comes to mind is to counter in the center with c5 because that's what you want to do when the opponent plays such a, a move on the rears on the b of the board so let's play c5 if he takes it's I think quite bad for him it opens up this diagonal for my bishop which would start kind of uh, blowing fire after moves like 94 so probably inadvisable the move c5 is also nice because I'm liberating my queen to enter the game into an active square like b6 or a5 <coughs> So, what I usually see from people when they play these kind of systems, they like to play a move like knight b5, I believe, with a very simple threat of knight c7 check, winning my rook. Then I will have to cover it with knight a6 and so on, but that's, that's what I, at least what I see most often when facing these kind of systems. But we shall see what the opponent chooses to play. He's taking quite a bit of of time to think, which is a bit surprising to me because I always saw this kind of players who play the London, this, this aggressive London system opening, they, they usually know very well what they are doing until very, very much a late uh, kind of stages of the game. They always seems to know what's going on, all the little subtleties and you s even I sometimes play games which I realize it's move number I don't know, 15 or something, and the opponent still banging out moves as if though it was all planned all along. But he's taking time to think on move number 5. This is once again a bit surprising because I, 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 don't, I don't think Black has done any move which is surprising or illogical, so there shouldn't be any reason. Uh -huh basically why white wouldn't anticipate this kind of moves from black but we shall see
well, it's been, I think, over three minutes since my opponent is thinking. I'm almost starting to wonder whether he is really here. Because at the end of the day, this is move number five. And I think it's not even that much m matters what exactly is going on in this specific position. <coughs> there is no reason to spend so much time on such a, um, let's say, non critical move. So he decided to go with h5. Yeah, this is always a bit of a tricky move to face because it seems like white is just offering up the pawn on h5 without any real reason. So I, I really might take it. I'll probably take it. Either knight takes or pawn takes. But just to mention, I think it's also okay for black to somehow ignore the threat, maybe queen b6 or knight c6. <coughs> the reason I'm not probably going to do this, because then he has this h6 move after which I would be forced to drop to f8, which is not a very happy square. Yeah, let's take on h5. Um, I don't really believe white can play this way. So yeah, he sacrifices the exchange. This is, was kind of anticipated. And now, yeah, this kind of Exchange sacrifices are sometimes an interesting uh, thing to consider, but is it really working here? I mean, maybe I'm wrong, maybe it's good for white, who knows? For the moment I have the material advantage, but white of course has some leading development and some threats move like e6 comes into consideration, even bishop e6. Or just taking on d4, which is also perhaps a very natural move. I kind of like bishop e6 just because it accelerates my development. That's a very sharp position. The kind of position that white is perhaps aiming at. But we shall we shall see how dangerous r this is really is. Because at the moment once again I'm threatening to take on d4. If he does long castle, which he might do, then I, I want to take on d4 because I want to force him to close up this d file. <coughs> I'm a bit, uh, as you can probably hear, I'm a bit uh, cold in this time of the year. It's actually summer <laughs> right now, but uh, when summer arrives, it's extremely hot outside and people tend to open up their air conditions like 24 hours per day so that's why a lot of people get cold in the summer so yeah he's played knight f3 now he wants perhaps to play knight g5 that's definitely something I have to consider my first instinct is just to play queen b6, keeping my development, creating some threats. I can also just play a bit like a, mm, not sure how to say, a bit of a slow move, like h6. But yeah, I don't really want maybe queen b6. You have 
this knight b5 move which is slightly annoying let's take on d4 let's see what happens <coughs> perhaps he would take with the knight in order to threaten my e6 bishop but then I will I'll probably give up my bishop on d4 not the most happy decision that I've ever done but once again it, it helps me to exchange some pieces and to relieve some of the tension time is running a bit low for him actually for the both of us the time control is 10 plus 5 so there is an increment here no player is in danger of losing the game on time but it's definitely something to keep an eye on so right now aside of knight takes d4 and e takes d4 once again white might consider playing a move like knight b5 creating this threat of knight c7 uh, with the idea to pick up the pawn on d4 but he decided just to take on d4 with the knight yeah, I think at this point I will have to part with my bishop which is kind of sad but it's also happy at the same time finally we see this knight developing into the game I'm really not sure what's going on but I can definitely say that I've slightly underestimated White's chances in this kind of position I'm really feeling uncomfortable, I don't feel like I play my regular game White ha definitely has some initiative but he does sacrifice some material so it's still an open question of uh, whether he can prove that he has enough long castles, okay now I wanted to play queen to a5 activating my queen perhaps hinting at the option of long castle even though I'll probably not do long castle it seems slightly risky to me the king being quite exposed here even though my king would be probably exposed regardless of where I would put it at this point So we shall see. One of my ideas of generating some counterplay, once again if I'm allowed, is to play something like rook c8 followed by knight b4, trying to combine this queen, knight and rook in some uh, operations on the queen side but as you can see white is not even uh, start to allow me this kind of things yeah now comes the really the big question do i castle or do i keep my king in the center for the time being To castle long with this bishop cutting off my king like this it is really scary. Even though keeping my king in the center of the board is probably equally scary. Yeah, I'm definitely not 100% sure about it but I'll go with long castles at least now my rooks are connected so they support each other I have no hanging pieces in the air this is kind of a nice thing that the opponent is less likely to have some 
tactics. I'd probably will consider doing something like bishop b5 right now with the idea to take on c6 eliminating this knight then maybe playing queen e5 but as you can see he chose to play knight to b5 with all of those ideas of penetrating on c7 but I believe this is covered easily by rook d7 <coughs> My queen on a5 is never in danger because she can always retreat to d8 or b6 uh, if I must. So once again I believe white has a very decent compensation for the exchange. But in his last moves he, he, he bit, perhaps a bit lost uh, something of his uh, initiative. To me it seems like this position, black to some degree consolidated, so I'm less worried about um, his attack. So g3 was played, perhaps yeah, he wants to develop the bishop from this diagonal, it's a logical move, but then the move knight b5 seems kind of empty to me. Yeah, my piece coordination is really not very good it feels like my pieces are kind of scattered around in no particular order or purpose the bishop on e6 is misplaced it should be on g6 but I have no way to get there perhaps f6 is a something to consider Yeah, I'm not very sure about it, but at least I have I gained some control over this square. So now queen e5 is never an idea, even if he manages to destroy the knight on c6. And I have a small hope of creating counterplay in the future using this pawn break with e5. But in order for this to happen, I, I, I first, <laughs> of course, need to find a good spot for my bishop from e6 yeah knight c3 yeah, so the move knight b5 turned out to be just a big waste of time I would be so happy to exchange off these bishops <laughs> but I just have no way to do it that's kind of sad I also, in particular, don't have a good any square for my bishop right now, aside of g8, which just looks terrible. Perhaps I should consider moving my rook, sacrificing the pawn on h7. Yeah, that's bad, that's bad. Maybe my queen is also misplaced on its current place. How crazy it is to maneuver it this way. <laughs> <coughs> My pieces are a pile of uncoordinated pieces. That's it's a sad thing, but let's try. Queen d8. Last resort. At least I have the time advantage. Which at least means that he needs to find some accurate moves with not much time on the clock yes now queen g8 yeah that seems like a crazy maneuver I mean getting my queen from a5 to g8 but at least I have some control over the light squares right now M my bishop can finally move and to release this pawn from e7 from its cage and move it forward it actually might not be such a terrible idea. Queen e2. This pawn is hanging, but if I take it, my pieces would be too much scattered around. I have to move the bishop. 
I have this tempo. Let's play bishop g4. Yeah, black white is probably doing the right thing, transferring his queen to the queen side. There is definitely more potential uh, for the queen there. Even though there is no immediate threat, there are some nice ideas, not exactly in this position of sacrificing the queen and then giving some checkmate with bishop a6, but it's just not working in this position, so I'm not too worried about this. e5 is probably still too early. There is no threat that's almost annoying because you are kind of used to responding to threats. But if there is no threat, then you are not sure what to do. <coughs> okay, let's play confusing moves. Let's play queen d8 back. Now my opponent would be just, what is this guy is doing? Knight a4. Now maybe I have a chance to exchange queens. can also take on d4, I really don't see the refutation of this, but <laughs> it's probably way too optimistic. Yeah, time is running low for me as well. Okay, I have some idea in mind. Oh, no, 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 I don't have, I don't have any idea. That was very bad. Okay, no choice, let's exchange. Oops, he blundered. Yeah, I'm sorry for this guy, but uh, this was a very big, bad blunder. If you would just exchange the queens. Okay, let's press on analyze. I feel like if we just exchange the queens and play knight c5, white has a stable advantage here. Because I cannot really prevent him from taking my rook. Yeah, computer suggests something like h5. Yeah, but this position is... I, I believe should be better for white. He has the two bishops advantage. I have some weaknesses. Definitely white has no risk of losing here. Let's see what happened here. The end of the game was <laughs> a, bit, uh, a bit silly, but... Yeah, so knight takes h5 should be the strongest move objectively, as you can see by the computer evaluation. Yeah, now he says just to develop it with knight c6. But perhaps the computer on this side is slightly underestimating white's initiative like I do. Oh, this is a very important tactical detail. If knight takes d5, I have e5, the double attack. <coughs> yeah, that's an important detail to see. So knight c6 was the right move. Yeah, and then I think throughout the game he always had some very decent compensation. But as the computer indicates, he was really never in a very big advantage. Maybe only at this point. Yeah, and this was just a huge blunder. He just forgot that the rook was hanging. Poor guy. Anyway, that was uh, definitely a tough game. I've uh, enjoyed it. Uh, I kind of enjoyed the task of defending a difficult position. I feel like this is kind of a very difficult thing to do in chess. Hope you enjoyed the game. Don't forget to subscribe, to leave some comments about uh, anything you want. Um, about the videos or their uh, content or quality please do it and see you next time bye bye